we're talking about the uh, Pande and Tamane gas project. In fact, it's called the South Africa Regional Gas Project. And what it encompasses is the uh, development of the Pande and Tamane gas fields, the uh, building of the central processing facility to treat the gas, piping it all the way to uh, building a pipeline to South Africa, and then the distribution network in South Africa. So that's the project. And the project is um, you know, in uh, South Central uh, Mozambique. It's located in South Central Mozambique. The rationale for the project was really how do you monetize stranded gas? Stranded gas is basically gas which is under the ground for which there hasn't been a market for a long time, which is the case of, uh, of these gas fields in Mozambique. And so this project basically takes the stranded gas and provides a market for it in South Africa. The main beneficiaries of the project were, of course, the equity investors, which included um, IFC. Um, the beneficiaries from a government perspective were both Mozambique and South Africa. This was a very significant project for both countries in terms of size um, and in terms of um, investment. Uh, the last beneficiaries will include the private sector, so Sasol, of course, who is the uh, majority investor in both the upstream gas developments as well as the export pipeline. There were several achievements. The first is that the project has performed very well from a financial perspective, um, significantly better than expectations at the time of board approval. Um, another achievement, in my view, is that uh, the partnership between IFC, SASOL, and the subsidiary of ENH, which is the Mozambican entity, these are the partners that are working on the extraction of gas from the Pande and Tamani fields. I believe that that partnership, although it has it has had challenges. I think it has been successful overall. Um, I think all three parties have um, improved over time. I think Sasol is working on its ability to um, forecast. It's working on its ability to successfully um, work with partners, which is something that it has not done a lot of traditionally. Um, and I think that the Mozambican subsidiary that participates as an equity investor has also been able to build up its technical um, and financial capacity in order to be able to participate more fully um, as a partner in the equity venture. It allowed the country to monetize its stranded grass resources. And, and one, uh, one benefit of that is the government of Mozambique uh, is going to earn significant uh, revenues from taxes and royalties. As an example, we had estimated that they would earn close to about $400 million. And they are, in fact, going to earn close to $2 billion due to high, higher commodity prices. Second, staying at, still staying at the, at the country level, is uh, South Africa is going to get a cleaner source of fuel. And from a climate change perspective, instead of burning, that's all instead of burning coal, is going to burn natural gases, leading to significant reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. Third, from a community perspective, not only has a project brought employment uh, as well as a lot of local spend into the economy, uh, there has been a health clinic uh, which has been opened up, which is benefiting more than 8,000 families. Uh, there has been a teacher training program to make sure that the schools around the project actually have qualified teachers. Uh, fourth is we wanted to make sure that the private sector in Mozambique benefited from this project. And what we have done now is privatized 10% of the government's share in the project by floating it on the local stock exchange so that not only does it provide liquidity in the local stock exchange, the private sector actually participates in the natural resource project in their country. Um, and last but not the least is that we had made arrangements for gas to be available locally in Mozambique when the time came so that the country uh, and the private sector would actually benefit from its own natural resource. I think one of the obstacles was that at the time that the project was initially committed, uh, Mozambique was still seen as quite a high-risk um, uh, 
investment. Um, and th this was a very large project. Um, it required a lot of investment from Sasol. It was a pretty complicated project in that it had several components, so not just the upstream investment uh, that IFC invested in, but also the export pipeline, um, as well as some changes to the infrastructure in South Africa. So given that it was a complicated project, um, one of the, the challenges was that you're doing a complicated project that requires a lot of investment in a pretty high-risk country. Um, so those were challenges that, that had to be overcome, and I think that there were certain aspects of the initial structuring of the deal um, that made it possible for it to go successfully nevertheless. From our perspective, as the World Bank Group, a, a key uh, lesson or key benefit here was that different parts of the World Bank Group can bring their comparative advantage to make a project happen. So in this case, MEGA provided political risk insurance to the private sector equity holders. The World Bank provided partial risk guarantee to the commercial banks, and IFC actually took equity risk and helped the government of Mozambique participate in this project. So those three institutions played a key role in making sure that the project would actually come together and be successful. Um, that was a uh, key lesson. The second one was never underestimate the amount of staff resources which would be required uh, especially when you have a partner who has limited capacity to implement the project, in this case, the state-owned uh, Mozambican entity. And so the IFC had to spend a lot of time and effort to build capacity uh, in this case. Third is in a country which has not had an experience in implementing large projects, it is best to phase in the implementation of these projects. And so in this case, we first actually drilled the uh, Pan and Tamane gas fields, then built the central processing facility and the pipeline, and then the distribution network, so that uh, operationally and politically um, these risks were um, done in a phased manner. And last but not the least is that having the government participate and take an equity position in the project helps to mitigate uh, long-term political risk. And in this case, we had the government of Mozambique participate both on the upstream and the pipeline, and I actually ensured that the project was a fair one so that the uh, contracts can stay the length of time, which is, a, I believe, a 30-year concession. Um, one of the key lessons learned is that uh, government entities can effectively participate in, um, in projects uh, alongside private sector entities. Uh, in cases where a project is high risk in particular, um, in natural resources, which tends to be um, an area of controversy in many countries, I think that the government of Mozambique's uh, active participation and the fact that they have a very significant equity stake have really led to um, the success of the project and also the stability of the contractual terms and arrangements. Thank you.